All right, so it's been a few days since my last video. I have been busy recently. I started doing some work on a farm a few days a week, watching the chickens drink water in real life rather than on the charts. But I am still watching the charts as well. I'll pull out my phone when I get an alert, uh, but that's besides the point. So far, nothing really too significant has happened. I mean, not anything that I haven't planned for. Uh, if you watched my last video, I'll quickly recap my thoughts, and I do mean quickly this time. Sometimes I get carried away with my recaps, but uh, since reclaiming this white line here, which is the value area low, I have been looking at this high as a target. It is the high of a you know very significant range. It's the range that we've been trading in since this range SFP all the way back here. I've been waiting to see if this high is going to get hit. I thought that it probably will. And the only thing that, you know, may make me start to change my mind is if we begin ranging somewhere prior to hitting it and we start to see really bearish things within that range. Now, we have started ranging, uh, but I mean, this range high got very close to this high back here. And I do know it's slightly different on Binance. Binance did take out this high, so maybe it's a little bit higher. But, uh, you know, at this point, we are ranging so close to that high that I'd be surprised if we don't take it. Um... But, you know, possibly we may have to wait a little bit before we take it. Like if we start breaking this range to the downside, uh, I think it's still possible that we you know, leave this high intact for later. Hopefully, if that's the case, we are able to find support on the value area low. And then we can you know try and challenge this high in the near future rather than falling back down below it and having to wait who knows how long till the next time we get up here. We have seen some bearish signs, so we took out the high right here. I think it was an SFP candle on some of the higher time frames. On the 4-hour, it was a close, but on the 3-hour, it was an SFP. So, you know, at least on some time frames, we wicked out the high, and uh, on others, we barely closed above it and then immediately fell back down below, which I still kind of treat as an SFP. And we did see divergences. So there were some pretty nasty looking divergences on the four hour. I believe it was with money flow as well. Money flow putting in a slight lower high right here. And pretty much all the time frames below that diverged as well. We also saw the daily time frame starting to top out as that was happening. And this could cause price to front run that high. But you know, also we are so close to it that I think it's very possible we get one last push to the upside to take out that high. Continue the bearish signs, maybe continue the divergences, and uh, possibly that ends up creating the pivot point. And I'm also still not discounting the idea of us breaking above this significant high and then getting a move up towards the point of control because, you know, the weekly time frame is bullish. We do have this on the bull side. Uh, momentum moving to the upside, VWAP still pointing to the upside, and money flow is currently moving to the upside, although it could make a lower high. So now on to the areas that I'm keeping my eyes on. So right now we are ranging. This is an important range. I am looking for trades in this range, uh, but I don't like the middle part of this range. The middle part of this range has been super choppy, super unpredictable. We've pretty much been slingshotting from value area high to value area low, not really giving great confirmations for any of those plays. This is really nothing I'm interested in trading. Uh, I am looking at the high because, well, we can SFP that high into the higher time frame range high, this white line. And, you know, ideally with this trade, I think we SFP this range high. We see continued divergences. Uh, I think it would be better to see this high reclaimed, although, you know, you could definitely get better risk reward entering just with this white line reclaim. I do think that's riskier. Also, who knows where the wick's going to land. It could be a really large wick. So maybe then waiting for this lower time frame range uh, to be reclaimed will throw off risk reward. So, you know, I'll have to judge that uh, when the time comes. But, you know, for right now, I think ideally we get a shallow SFP, a reclaim of this range. And we would also have to get an SFP of that high on uh, Binance because they are slightly different. But this was a shallow SFP. So, you know, we don't really have to come that far above this high to hit that high. And obviously, the more confirmations, the merrier. If we see trades get stopped out, if we see people longing the top, that's, you know, a decent sign that there may be trap traders and that that may have just been a liquidity run. If there's lower time frame price action confirmations, that's great as well. So those are all things I'm going to be watching for. I will be watching for lower time frame local divergences as price works its way up here. Um, but yeah, this is definitely an area I'm interested in. I also like the range low and now looking lower than this range, I want to move on to the idea 
uh, or the scenario where we actually do front run this high up here. What happens if this ends up being the top or maybe we get another very shallow SFP but don't even touch this high. Maybe that ends up being the high. Uh, what happens if we break this range to the downside? Well, if we leave this high intact, I will be uh, more inclined to be looking for longs, I think. Um, you know, I still probably will be watching these zones regardless, but if we don't touch the high first, I think that can give me a target for these ideas, at least like an ultimate target. I'll obviously be looking to take profits along the way. And I do like all of these three zones, these blue boxes that I've drawn up. Um, these significant levels below, I don't like as much, at least not, you know, in the current situation because for that we'd have to significantly lose value very low and you know i don't really think there's a chance of us getting a move down there just to hit off one of these levels and then wicking all the way back up closing back up here i think that's unlikely all this stuff down here would more so be like if we do lose the value very low maybe we can get a temporary bounce from some of these levels uh although maybe we don't maybe you can just see like a very tiny bounce from them before we move lower I've seen that kind of thing happen. Uh, I do think we'd be in a more bearish environment if we start losing this value area low. But for these blue boxes right here, I need to pull up some things. So I already got the FIB pulled up. I got the FIB from 9.16.24. That's one thing I'm looking at. And I also need to pull up the value area from 8.524, which means I'm looking at all the volume that is traded since this low all the way back here we have essentially been ranging following this low prices been moving sideways we have a significant range high and you could even look at this as a range low maybe you want to pull a slightly different um fixed range maybe you want to say that the range started from here we had the low we took out the high we took out the low we reclaimed took out the low again reclaimed so you could say the range starts from here as well so let's pull that and it is practically the same. The value rate high is slightly different, uh, but it is still coming in right around that box. I may actually want to move this box to the upside a little bit. But yeah, I more so tend to look at a zone around value rate highs and lows rather than looking at the exact level. And this first box, so the one that is closest to the range, we have the 0.5 fib from uh, this fib pull, which is from this significant low right here. Uh, that is the low that we put in before we uh, broke up above the value rate low, right? We found resistance on it here, got a retrace, put in this significant low, and then broke above it, and the value rate high. So that is pretty much zone number one that I'm watching. Uh, you could also say there is a resistance to support flip here with these wicks possibly turning into support. Um, they line up almost perfectly with the value rate high, so I like that uh, additional confluence. And box number two. So the first thing I have on here is this NDPOC, which is coming in at the top of the box, and it is right above the macro value area low. So this is that significant value area low since all time high that I've been watching. It has changed over time, and you know I may even want to be responsible and make sure that it hasn't changed again. And uh, look at that; it actually has. But uh, that is not that bad of a development because it's actually moved closer to that NDPOC. It's actually right up underneath it. So, you know, again, I'm still looking at this value rate low as more of a zone. Um, we don't have to hold it to the exact dollar. We could easily even fall down below it, stay down below it on some of the lower time frames. But on the daily time frame, it just ends up being a wick. But let me pull up the daily volume profile from 918 to show you what I was looking at. So. Pulling it from the day prior at 20 o'clock, which is when the daily candle closes for me, and pulling it over to the 18th at 20 o'clock, we have an untapped daily point of control coming in at 60,453. And there is also confluence with the golden pocket of that same FIB pull. So another zone of confluence, some very important levels coming in in this box as well. Now this lower box. Now, the one thing that uh, you know does maybe change with the value area low moving to the upside is that we need to you know reclaim a bit more with any wicks down below it to like actually hold it as a wick. Now, is holding it as a wick the most important thing? I mean, we could easily close the daily candle down below it. Then the next daily candle we close back significantly above it. Um, I don't think you know a wick is. The most important factor here but it does certainly look better when you just have like a daily wick down below such an important level like that 
but I am looking at this lower box uh, for multiple reasons. Number one, I have a money sign there because there are dollar signs sitting below this significant low. We can run that, take out the liquidity, the stop losses from down below there, and hit off the 786 of that FIB pull, as well as the point of control of uh, the larger fixed range pull. I do think it's possible to see a daily wick down to that level. Uh, you know, this does kind of mess it up a little bit, but what I did earlier is I took this wick up here at the top, measured the size of that, and I brought that down to the value rate low. And we could see that we could get a wick, uh, you know, slightly larger than that one and see that dip into this box and then reclaim this. You know, we saw a daily wick on the opposite side up at that high. So I think it's definitely possible that we see it down here. But, you know, here's the thing. I think the two boxes that are um, above or at the value rate low are, uh, you know, more so zones that I have my eyes on. I do think this one is a bit more risky. And if I did try and catch any knives here, try and take a trade from that zone, it would have to be one that is targeting up to that uh, value rate low because we could find resistance on it before moving lower. And, you know, depending on where you enter, it may be tough to get good risk reward with good confirmations. Uh, I do think it would be, you know, quote unquote safer to see a bounce from this level and then reclaim the value rate low and then maybe try and trade local price action from there. That is what I would be doing if I did not take a trade from this zone. But if the confirmations are there on the lower time frames, then I may take, you know, a responsible risk on this trade. Understanding that, you know, we could get a bounce from here just for us to move lower. You know, at that point, we are in danger of not reclaiming the value very low. We are below it. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely think this is more of a risky one. All right, I think that is it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like, subscribing, and leaving a comment. That helps to support my channel, and I appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next video.